All right, hi everyone. So what we're going to do today is show you the Cornet Electrosmog testing meter. The model is the ED88T+. Plus. This is the newest um, economical, you could say, uh, layperson or, or affordable model from Cornet. Um, and it uh, retails for just under $180. And there's a link to where you can get it uh, in the in the description below. But we're going to go through a review of its functionality and a usage guide and show you some real world examples so of, of how to use this. So what you're looking at right now is the, the default mode. As soon as you turn it on, there's a switch here on the side. And right now I actually have it running on USB power. So it can run on USB power infinitely or it can run on battery power. So it's on USB power. This is the, the sort of the background radiation level in my uh, apartment where I live. Uh, I have everything wired here, but they do have a wireless router upstairs, which as you may know, if you're educated on this, you can't win everybody over all the time, even with the best information. So um, I have that shielded as much as possible, but this is the background radiation. That's 0 0.02 milliwatts per meter squared. Now for reference, the building biology or the science-based uh, background or threshold for extreme concern is 1.000. That's one milliwatt per meter squared. So we're doing pretty good here overall. I mean, ideally you wanna see as close to 0, 0.00 as possible, but this isn't too bad. I wanna show you what happens now. Here's our setup. So this, it's one foot away. You see the foot long ruler there from a Wi-Fi router. So let's go ahead and turn that on. There's a switch in the back and it'll take about a minute or two to boot up. So let's just watch what happens here on our Cornet. Okay, so there you see it flash up to 91.0 or thereabouts, 91,000 milliwatts per meter squared. So from a foot away, the Cornet is showing us that this is actually 91 times higher than the building biology guideline for extreme concern. So, um, and you, if you're observant, you'll have noticed that it was actually 90, the max even before had said 91 as I did a test uh, cycle on it before as well. So this is a very handy device that I, I wanna show you a couple of other features on here and then, um, and then uh, tell you about how you can uh, get one affordably for yourself and your family here. So if we turn on the side, if we turn the volume, there's a volume dial associated with the on off switch. If I turn light again, that's going to turn the light off, but the volume on. So there the light is on now and the volume is on. To get, so to get the volume, turn the dial all the way up and press the light button a couple times. So here you see, and it peaked there, 126,000. So um, in, in, in it, Comparing that to a smart meter, I have tested personally smart meters from a foot away at above 500 um, milliwatts per meter squared. So about roughly four times higher than this, their pulses. And some other manufacturers that I haven't personally tested have tested off the charts even higher than that. So um, this, is, this is what it sounds like. I don't know if you can hear that, but it does come with a, uh, a port right there you see for headphones. So to run the the audio feature on there. It's really a good thing. You don't have to annoy everyone else in your vicinity. You can just have headphones on. Um, there are other modes on this as well. And you know what? I'm going to turn this off, this Wi-Fi router off. Okay, so that's off. And um, I wanted to show you here other modes. There's other units available. You, you see down here a unit button. If you press that, it goes from milliwatts per meter squared to volts per meter and decibel meter, decibels per meter. So I'm not too familiar with the decibels per meter, um, but the milliwatts per meter squared is, is basically all you really need to get a handle on how much wireless radiation is there in any particular environment. And we're gonna show, we're gonna test, um, you know, go through an example here in a moment of, of how you would kind of scan your home once you get uh, this device. So if you press um, mode now, it's going to go to something called LF600. This is your Gauss meter. This is your magnetic field. Okay, and it's, the unit is in micro Teslas. If you press it again, a different way of measuring it is LF30, also a Gauss meter, also in micro Teslas. And if you press it one more time, this is the E-field meter or the 
extremely low frequency meter, and that's in volts uh, volts per meter, e or I should say, extremely low frequency mode, and that's in volts per meter. And where the sensor is for this mode is just on the top here. So you would, you know, press it into close to, for example, a uh, fluorescent light bulb, or uh, or hold it in the direction of a power line, uh, for example, or a tower, and you would get your low frequency reading as well. But we're going to focus uh, predominantly here on the wireless. So for the wireless, the antenna is on this side here on the left side. So um, I did a test earlier, and I don't want to turn the router on, but I'll just I'll, I'll tell you. So you want to hold it vertical so that this uh, 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 testing um, area here on the on the left hand side you know it's basically it's obviously it's hidden but it's vertical up and down on the left hand side so that as much of the signal reaches that as possible now if i was to go like that the readings that i get um they were actually about 30 to 40 times less because less of the wireless signal is is hitting the sensor on the meter so that um means that you can actually functionally tell where radiation is coming from by moving the the, the meter um, vertical or horizontal and the biggest readings are going to be perpendicular okay so remember that and i'm just going to unplug it here and show you a couple of other things it can do okay so we're on battery mode now so if I'm coming into a room, let's say I wanted to find the, the source of wireless radiation. So I'm just going to, you know, show you what I would do. Um, I'm not a certified uh, trained professional, by the way. For a list of or contact with professionals, I recommend the Building Biology uh, website. So um, you can see it's kind of higher here. In this part of the room, it's starting to go up a little bit. Now, if I'm, I know that the source is, uh, is above my my head here in the ceiling so I'm just going to zoom out here so um, I'm just going to show you that when I put it close to the ceiling there you can see the highest number is generally 0 0.605 there I know that there's a wireless router about five feet above where the testing device is now so if I'm going to have a look around other aspects of the room here there's the signal isn't as high so just do a sweep and then use that feature that we talked about earlier where you tilt it uh, ver uh, horizontal and vertical to find where the source is if you want to isolate uh, the source of, of any uh, wireless transmitter. So something else I really like about this new model of the Cornet is that it comes with a super handy data logging feature. And I'm just going to hit search device. It's going to find it there and I'm going to hit start recording and I'm going to change turn off the auto height now you see they're very low the way I have the y-axis set here but um, just as an example you'll see the numbers both in the inset on the on the cornet screen itself and you'll see it on the computer screen which is really cool so just an example here I have as you can see the cornet is sitting on my keyboard and when I go to turn off airplane mode, watch this. Okay, so you see a spike, and you can, uh, on both screens, on the cornet and the computer screen, and that's just an example of, um, obviously the, the device is not meant to be used immediately on the, uh, on the transmitting surface or that close to it, but that's just an example of, of how you can, uh, you can actually, um, you know, see in real time what's happening on the screen and actually save it and log it and uh, and, and so forth. So very handy tool. It actually pulls 10,000 times a second and it outputs twice a second onto the screen. So there's a lot going on there. And in a future video, I'm going to show you how you can wire not only your computer, but your phone. So stay tuned to that. So within the box here, I just want to show you there's um. Um, a handy uh, actually comes with a cord to connect to USB and there's a handy product guide here as well so if you have any questions this is your um, this is your best place to refer to them just give that a read and you can see various um, features and and settings there 
Okay, so we got the cornet here at the base of a, um, the base of actually a 4G tower. I know it's that, I know it's 4G, it's not 3G, and it's not 5G, but that's a 4G Verizon tower. And so that's how the cornet would, uh, you know, that's how it's reading this particular EMF zone. So that's just at the base of it. You can see it's going up to 5. There was a spike, I think, up to 11 and even 17 there, you can see just before I started recording. That's where the peak value was. And you can get slightly different readings just by changing the angle of it. It'll probably go down now because we're pointed at it. But if we kind of raise it up, you can sort of see. I don't know if you can still see the numbers, but um, I'll raise it back down, or I'll bring it back down so you can see it. But that's um, six times the building biology guideline for extreme concern. And another um, aspect that's, um, that's super helpful is on the right hand side you see the green, yellow, and red. Uh, green is generally safe, yellow is generally you know caution warranted, and red is very unsafe. So with these towers they actually, um, I think they directionally point them uh, based upon my research. So if you're standing right under it you're not getting the full brunt of obviously the emissions if you were, uh, that you would get if you're um, raised up or if we were to you know elevate the the cornet device on a on a telescopic pole or something like that that would be really really interesting to see the results we get but right now yeah this is six times beyond the threshold for extreme concern so definitely definitely do not want to live close to this so here we are in nature and um, as you can see the readings on the cornet are very very low that point zero zero five is actually the lowest it can go so it's essentially zero and, and and even when I turn the sound on there the sound is on it's nothing and one of the uh, additional features that I really like is that the test range of this device goes up to 8 gigahertz so a lot of the other similarly um, marketed devices out there only go to 4 or thereabouts so I like having that additional range uh, because it can cover a lot of the um, you know five gigahertz and end up frequencies that are uh, becoming more and more prevalent these days the one downside or drawback of this cornet meter is that even though it has the largest range in, in frequency of testing frequency of any um, uh, let's say economically priced testing device under a thousand dollars it does not it's not certified to at least to test 5G frequencies, which are 25 gigahertz and up. So in light of the fact that the only technology that I know of that can test those frequencies costs typically tens of thousands of dollars, uh, I consider this to be the, the best alternative, a very strong product for everyday use. So over the past six years, since my friend Mike at Stop Smart Meters UK gifted me this, my first Cornet um, uh, device, electrosmog tester, I have found that this specific model is consistently the best, most reliable, and easiest to use, compact and affordable electro, uh, uh, electrosmog testing device on, on the market currently. Um, I'm going to continue to keep everyone posted on what I see to be um, developments with new technology um, coming in for uh, for this purpose. I think it's going to be crucial going forward that as many people as possible in the big picture of things get their hands on such a device so that we can make visible the invisible. We can um, protect ourselves, our families, and our kids and at the same time use this information and use this the the readings that we get and the sound of the, 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 the radiation that we can hear through this device and actually share it with people because that's how this movement is growing. It's word of mouth. Having the ability to quickly and instantly show the radiation levels and also to demonstrate the sound of them to anyone whom you're trying to um, wake up about the EMF radiation issue uh, is very powerful. For example, if you have children in a school that has Wi-Fi, imagine having one of these in your pocket, slipping it out and, sh and, and, and opening, turning it on in the classroom and demonstrating 
that those levels are multiple times higher than the building biology code for extreme concern. And so um, I encourage uh, you to click the link below in the description or below on this website where this is embedded. There is, um, and you'll see there, a, a list of features and an option for you to order. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.